Welcome everyone to the 2022 boys uh, soccer uh, rules meeting. Happy to be joined this morning uh, by uh, Mike Chipman, who is our rules interpreter from HSSO and Sean Stedford from Colorado Academy, who is our uh, coaches association president. So uh, really looking forward to, to another season. Mike and, uh, and Sean and I were just talking about how uh, we're, we're fortunate to not have just been finishing up the the season D, we had a bit of a normal season this past year, and so a little bit of a, a time off uh, to, to rest up, and we're looking forward to the start of the boys' fall season. So um, I'm going to turn it over to you, Mike, at this time. And coaches, as you're going through this video and you have some questions, we will have a rules or a uh, preseason coaches meeting, as we do every year via Zoom, where you will have the opportunity to come on and ask some questions if you have them after watching uh, this rules meeting with Mike. But Mike, I'm going to turn it over to you, and the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Justin, and welcome all of you that are viewing this uh, video. Uh, this is the 2022-23 Soccer Rules PowerPoint, uh, which starts off with the rules changes that we have for this coming uh, uh, seasons. Um, the first one is about hair control devices. Um, what it's saying here is that, um, and it, I don't mean to be... <laughs> Um, insulting to anybody, but mostly girls, it seems, like to have uh, uh, various things to secure their hair, uh, some of them um, more permanent than others. What we're saying is, is that if they are permanently or securely fastened, um, that that's okay, given a couple of um, obvious um, things to look at. So here are some examples. Uh, the first one, it says it's illegal. That's because they can whip them around, I guess. Uh, the third one, the same sort of thing. Um, B and D are both legal. Um, and the, um, the reasons for what's legal and illegal are somewhat um, unknown to me, but you get some examples here. Um, I will say that this is going to be one of those things that's fairly referee dependent. The referees will see this video. Um, they will see this presentation and uh, hopefully we will all be as much on the same page as we possibly can. If you believe that you have a player that had something similar to B who was not allowed to play for whatever reasons, please file that supplemental or that um, post game report that you guys do so we can have a talk with that uh, referee. Some more examples. Um, number seven uh, has a lot to do with the same thing as the hijab that we talk about. It's just too long. It's too easy to grab that and pull it. Uh, so that would probably, even without the, the, the beads, the fact that it's kind of ropish looking. However, if somebody was to grab that and it was deemed legal to wear in the first place, um, that would be a foul and a misconduct. Um, you can see a, a couple more examples that are legal there. Here are some things uh, to look at. The one to focus on is E. The hair clip is obviously not legal because it's got sharp points on it and obviously is not securely fastened to the head. Uh, for the longest time, we've had discussions on picture B as to whether that should be allowed or not based upon the, quote, firmness of the knot unquote, this rule change says that doesn't matter anymore. And bobby pins, as you can see in picture A, are now legal. Um, I believe that they still are somewhat hazardous and you may still come across some referees, I'll try not to be one of them, um, that says that they, they could still cut somebody and they're concerned about that. Uh, jewelry, however, is still not acceptable, even it is part of the legal um, hair fixtures, um, they would not be permitted. Uh, the reason on all of these is fairly obvious. There's sharp edges, there's points, or there's something that could, in the case of that shell, could be hit, cracked, and cut. Um, so that's the sort of things that will be illegal. Mike, can you go back to the, to the bow, picture B? Right. Can the knot be anywhere? Because I know the answer that question some, is the yes. People that have headbands and they tie them in the back. Is that yes? Okay, thank you. Yes, that that can be uh, at the backside, which is where they mostly are. I don't think I've ever actually seen anybody with that particular position. And 
just a random question. Does the color of that hair piece matter? It does not. It is the same as the uh, the protective um, helmet, as we call it. Uh, it can be any color. Thanks. And does not need to be the same color for every player. Okay. That's a good question. And then, Mike, I just wanted to touch on the jewelry piece there. I know that you and I and Ken, um, obviously, jewelry would not be allowed to be worn on the field, but we're going to come up with some wording on kind of maybe an alteration for the for Colorado state rule adoption on um, what the procedure will be and, and the penalties and some of those things. So just for coaches to look out uh, as Ken, uh, Mike and myself work and, and Sean probably probably as well uh, on, on some of that thing. We'll, we'll send out an email to everybody uh, with some specifics once we have those uh, kind of hammered out. In the last season, um, I noticed that there were uh, more than usual players who were using um, uh, band-aids or tape over their ears um, and that sort of thing. That is, the wearing of the jewelry is not allowed, whether it's covered or not. Good point. Okay. Um, the procedures for ending a game have been modified. That's 713. The Colorado procedures for ending a game, as far as I know, have not been changed at all. Basically, if a game has finished its first half, um, it is complete during the regular season. Um, if it is not completed during the first half, the referee is requested to send in a supplemental game report with all of the, you know, why was it suspended? Uh, what was the score? Were there any misconducts? That sort of thing issued. Uh, to Chassa, and Chassa will decide how to proceed from there. Uh, in postseason play, obviously we're trying to get to a winner. Um, the same thing applies even in the second half. We do need to complete the whole game. Uh, as far as the referees are concerned, um, the entire game uh, may not need to be played according to Chassa, but again, Chassa will make that decision, not the referees. Any questions on that? Okay. Uh, this one is kind of interesting to me. So a goal may not be scored by a goalkeeper's throw into the opponent's goal. I don't know that I have ever seen anybody that could throw a soccer ball that far. Uh, Had a heck of an arm back in the day, Mike. That would be heck of an arm or a <laughs> heck of a lot of, gee, let's see where this ball goes, <laughs> sort of attitude by the defense. Um, the reason this one could be a little tricky is because um, it basically is adding to the place where it says that you may not score a goal uh, from a throw-in as well. So that's where it resides. Um, can the keeper fall into their net without being pushed into the net or accidentally throw the ball into their own net? The answer is yes, that would be a goal. We have a new rule that defines exactly what um, an arm is. It's from the bottom of the armpit to the end of the fingers. Um, I think that's self-apparent, but now it's in the rule. We now have a rule that defines what uh, an arm is for the purposes of handling and, and other things. Um, basically, the arm starts at the bottom of the armpit and goes to the end of the fingers. It seems self-explanatory, uh, but there you have it. It's official as to where that is. Now, other things in, involved about handling and uh, how it might approach offside are shown in this slide. Um, so in A, the hand of the attacker is in an offside position, but you can't play the ball with that hand. Therefore, that's not offside. But in B, the shoulder, which you can play it with, is in the offside position. The arm of the defender, which cannot be played, um, doesn't count. So therefore, that is offside. And in the third picture, both the arm and the leg, all of which, uh, excuse me, the leg, the arm of the defender doesn't count. The leg of the attacker does count. So again, that would be offside. Now, 
going to the actual definitions of offside, that's one where we all tend to disagree back and forth as to whether there was intent or whether um, uh, gained an advantage. Um, the basic thing is if the arm is struck by the ball or the hand, if you will, um, and it is unintentional, the only thing that would call offside is if a goal is scored either directly or within a reasonable period of time of that happening. Um, and that's the accidental one. Otherwise, um, intent obviously has part of it. If they reach for it, if they are um, making their bodies bigger, it's handling. If they're struck by the ball accidentally or if an obvious advantage exists, then even though it struck the hand, sorry, let's just keep playing uh, because it didn't matter. Is there any questions on that? So there will be. Like, many. Oh yeah, it looks like we're looking, is it, is it the elbow is kind of what we're, because it... No, her shoulder on B. Well, no, I'm saying, because it says, if you look at like A, Okay, you know, on says, A, she's onside. Correct. And it looks like kind of like the point there is the elbow. And if you look at B, that red line is just a little bit above her elbow. So is it is it fair to say almost that you're you're when the arm's extended, you're looking at the el the elbow? Okay, so on B, the armpit is no longer is is the, the shoulders above the armpit. So it strikes the uh, if it struck the shoulder, then it's a playable ball. And then that's why that's offside. And so I was looking more at the defender, like in defenders. In yeah, the defender's arm, the elbow is below the armpit. Therefore, it's not a playable feature. Therefore, it is not holding the attacker onside. Okay. Okay. And okay. that's true on C as well. Those two pictures okay. are identical. Okay. And again, this is an instantaneous picture. Very seldom do we actually see things in an instantaneous manner. Um, so it's a fluid game. And as I said before, it'll be subject to disagreements. Sorry, it just is. I, Most things are. That's correct. <laughs> Penalty kicks. Um, not really changing except how it's shown um within this particular box so if the person taking the penalty kick does not play it forward and the context would be that the person taking the penalty kick wishes to fake out i guess the goalkeeper by giving it to somebody else to then come in and run in and take uh, the kick uh, that would be result in an indirect free kick coming back out because that's not legal the ball must be kicked towards the goal. Now, if it's weakly kicked towards the goal, then everything's fine, just like it was before. Is there any questions on that one? And I, for the record, I have never seen anybody pass a penalty kick off to somebody else. Really? Oh, I've seen that. Italy in the World Cup, man. Yeah. Well, uh, I should say in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, they're making sure everybody understands about corner kicks, that it is from the arc, not the corner, as far as what 10 yards is. There are a few fields that are properly marked that I've seen uh, that have a hash mark. Um, I think there is one field that actually has a hash mark along the touch line. Uh, at any rate, it's 10 yards from the arc, even if they put the ball specifically where the flag would normally be, uh, which if you think about it, equals 11 yards, but um, it's from the arc, not from the corner. Editorial changes. Um, some of these are just nuanced and not really worth much. The, the fact that that player is wearing the shin guard improperly uh, means that um, it's not being worn properly that does not result in the coach getting a caution because they are wearing the equipment, they're just wearing it improperly. Uh, they need to fix it. If they need to go off to fix it, that's what they, that's what we have to do. And then they can substitute at the next substitutional uh, opportunity. 
The tape thing has started to croach back onto us. Uh, number six is wearing blue socks with a different color blue, so that is acceptable. However, number four is wearing white socks with obviously bright red tape. That is not acceptable. I will comment that there's an awful lot of referees that don't see the importance of this, and I may or may not agree if I'm there, but please, all of you coaches, try and get the right color. Uh, clear on the white would probably be my advice, um, and you could then use it on the, uh, the home socks as well. And just to remind everybody, your visiting socks are white, your home socks are not white. Um, this was the way we've always played it, but they're just re-clarifying it on how they write it. So number 10 is offside. The goalkeeper is allowed to bounce the ball so that it doesn't go in the net. Uh, they call that deliberate save. Um, if the goalkeeper had grabbed it and then thrown it that way, then 10 would not be offside. But if, if the goalkeeper just punches it over to 10, 10 is in the offside position at the time that eight kicked it, therefore 10 is offside. Another example is if it hits the post, number 10 is still in the offside position. It hasn't been played by anybody else and therefore 10 is offside. That's really not a change. They're just trying to make sure that the wording on it is more specific. Mike, that's, <clears throat> that's because 10 is, in an offside position before the shot is taken, correct? Correct, yes. Or when, when the shot is taken. Yeah, when it's taken. Yeah, okay. correct, correct. If number 10 ran up there from uh, behind number three, then, and, and you've seen that happen a lot of times, people say, hey, they're offside. Well, no, they started when the ball was kicked and they were just faster than the defense. That happens yeah, and, a lot. Right, and a save off the goalkeeper is not, you know, the same as a pass from, Correct. Yeah, a defender. So yeah, deflection off the goalkeeper is still off. He or she is right. still off. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Points of emphasis. Uh, sportsmanship is always uh, a nice thing. So try and keep it friendly. On the coach's side, I'll let you guys talk amongst yourselves as to what um, should be and should not be done. Um, I'll let Justin also talk later about um, what the misconduct for coaches has been like in this last year. Uh, my uh, feeling is, is that we have calmed down from the previous year, which was all messed up for other reasons anyway. Um, to the referees, we're trying to tell them to keep it civil, to not be the gasoline on the fire, to do what they can, to understand that this is a shared teaching experience and go from there. Um, coaches are constantly complaining, then spectators are going to do the same. If spectators and coaches do that, the odds are that the players are going to get a caution at some point for misconduct. So it usually doesn't start with the players. It really doesn't. It starts from the sidelines. And uh, uh, so whatever you can do to help us to keep that from happening is a good thing. Yeah, and this will be a point of emphasis for us. And we'll have a piece on this at both the boys and the girls uh, preseason meeting. So we also like to tell the referees to say, uh, you know, thank you to number four. Um, that was helpful. Whatever you can say, quick. Don't concentrate on it, obviously. But uh, um, sportsmanship is a good thing. Um, should never engage with the spectators who are in exhibiting unsporting behavior. Uh, we do have referees who seem to want to go up into the stands, point people out, and say, get rid of that person. Um, it's not the referee's job to do so. It is whoever the game administrator, it's his job to keep the crowd under control. Um, it does have an effect, I believe, on some officials not wanting to come back. I would say that from my experience, that's been relatively minimal, with the exception of some referees have started to mark some schools as um, blocked. In other words, where they have had instances of uh, unsporting behavior on a repetitive basis. Now, you know, whether it was deserved or not is, un is unimportant, but in the assigning program, they have the ability to block those schools and locations. Um, 
if they do so, that means that there are going to be fewer officials available for that school or for that location. They need to understand that the cause and effect that this has. Um, things that are very important is uh, demeaning language, taunting, hate speech. Um, I think a lot of you have seen that uh, at the international level, there's been a push by FIFA to try and get the crowds to quit doing that. Uh, I don't know how successful it's been from what I see. It's not been successful because it continues. Um, obviously, at the international level, uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, different races, different people, of uh, uh, different beliefs. Um, not, not exactly staying on soccer, but you saw Kidra, um, Kidri rather, uh, for the avalanche uh, being a victim in St. Louis. Um, I thought that the initial reaction was wrong by the St. Louis side, but he subsequently really changed that around. And uh, we don't want to have that happen at high school level at all. Uh, time wasting, it occurs. We all know it occurs. So one of the things um, is the goalkeeper holding the ball for longer than six cents, six seconds, obviously, um, then the referee should do something. The official uh, ruling is, is it's an indirect free kick from the other team. Um, normally what you're going to get is some warnings uh, from the referee. Let's get the ball back in play. Uh, come on, keeper, stop delaying. I'm going to have to uh, um, call that if you take too long. Uh, more often than not, it's repetitive. Um, delays on restarts, such as free kicks. Well, that's going to be that's going to be something that um, um, depends on the situation. Um, if if the ball went way out of play and uh, the, it's the visiting team that's ahead and it takes time to go get that ball because there's no ball runners. Um, the home team probably should have had ball runners. Um, I know that sounds like sour grapes sometimes, but that's what should happen. However, if we have all of that stuff and the player puts the ball down and, then, and says, uh, oh, I'm going to go to the other side of the goal area. Or if they hold the ball for a few seconds and then say, here, you take the throw in to another player. Such things like that, the referee probably should consider stopping the clock. And of course, substitution after the 75th minute, um, that's in the rules. We must stop if the team that's ahead um, substitutes, even if the other team is doing so. Stutter step is fine. Um, there must be a continuous motion, but a stutter step can have a continuous motion. Uh, again, the ball must be kicked forward and if it's not kicked forward, as we saw before, it's going to be an indirect free kick coming back. Expressions of frustration or disappointment or private dissatisfaction not directed to anyone can be handled by a verbal warning. Um, it can be as long as it isn't the fifth or tenth time. Uh, simply disagreeing with an official, that is a dissent. Continuously dis, uh, disagreeing with that official that could be. Um, and of course, continually public complaining, prolonged, repeated actions, then the referee is going to have to do something. And uh, anything that can be done to prevent that from happening is, is going to be better. Um, and then we've got some things here to help you know where um, education opportunities are there. This is for the officials. Um, here are some things that might be on that site. Um, there are things there for coaches, students, parents. Um, all of these are not, I don't know that all of these are free, but a good number of these are free. And then uh, this advertisement for the NFHS network. Uh, 2025 is a postponed deadline, I believe. It was going to happen by now. But uh, the goal that NFHS has is that every single um, game in every single sport um, can be viewed on the NFHS network. And that is it. I got a quick question, just going back to the substitution. Uh, maybe I misheard yours, maybe just a clarification. So if the team that's behind 
in the last, let's say there's two minutes left in the game, teams behind, they decide to make a substitution. The team that's ahead sees that they're going to make that substitution, decides to also make a substitution. The clock won't stop in that situation, will it? Because the team that's behind is making a substitution? No, it will stop. I know that doesn't sound right, but it's, it's consistent uh, that if the team that is ahead substitutes, um, then the clock will stop during regardless the of whether or not the team that is behind is substituting. That is correct. Good. That's all I had. Okay. So I have, let's see, where do I start? Okay. So I think that's all we've got, right, Mike? 